Hey everybody, welcome back to the Speak Up Erica podcast. And in today's episode, my guest is Sarah. Yay! Hi Sarah. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, before we get into our topic for today, which will be um, chatting about diabetes, could you share a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm almost 26 years old um, and I've been a diabetic for close to 22 years. Uh, I'm very open about my diabetes and I like to stay involved with everything that has to do with it. Um, I also work in the digital marketing field, which has given kind of a voice for me to talk about my diabetes. Oh, that's awesome. So, so um, sorry, in your work, you're able to um, um, share like highlights about diabetes as well or, or like inform people there? Yeah, so um, uh, pre-pandemic, I was trying to get my company a little bit involved in, in the charity work for the type 1 diabetes community. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think digital marketing gave me a voice into being able to to talk online about my diabetes not just through my work but um through the work i've done with jdrf as an intern and a volunteer Mm -hmm. oh that's awesome Mm -hmm. yeah i remember so sarah and i we um we went to school together and we were in a uh like a what's it called how do i a, like a club <laughs> I don't know uh, a student association <laughs> yeah a student, a student society together so um it, it was awesome because I, I feel like um you really brought awareness to diabetes when we were on that team together as well and we, we even had uh a, when we had our photo shoot we all dressed in blue so we can raise awareness about diabetes and we're able to like share about it was it a diabetes day was that what it was yeah yeah so it was for national diabetes uh, awareness day in november mm-hmm, i remember that that's awesome um i guess i'll get into my questions then sarah but uh, yeah. thank you uh could you share about the first time you found out you were diagnosed yeah so i was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes when i was four years old so um i'm still really young um, I had started showing all the symptoms of type one diabetes and, uh, weight loss, uh, mood change, constant need to drink water and use the washroom. So my parents took me to get tested. And this is back when I still lived in Jordan. Um, and I was diagnosed with type one diabetes then, and I've been living with it since. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, how was that like? Because you were so young, um, I couldn't imagine, uh, yeah. So with um, the technology and the diabetes management that was still implemented in Jordan when I was first diagnosed, um, there was a lot of restrictions on what I could eat as a kid, which it was just already hard enough when you're a kid to deal with something new, as new as type 1 diabetes, but then add in all of these restrictions, like no eating sugar, um, you have to watch what you eat, all that stuff. Um, it just it made it a little bit more difficult to be a kid at times, but yeah. at the same time, it taught me how to be responsible at a very young age. Um, over the years, the diabetes management has gotten a lot better, and I've seen it go from needles and shots to uh, insulin pumps and a cont- continuous glucose monitor. So over the years, it's gotten a lot more advanced and easier to actually manage mm-hmm. versus when I first was diagnosed with it. Oh my gosh, yeah, I bet. Um, could, could you share a bit more about the two different types of diabetes? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, it's just, this isn't medical or anything, but it's just that it, in, in layman's term, it's type 1 diabetes means that your pancreas is completely shut down. It doesn't produce any insulin and you need an outside source of insulin to be able to digest the carbohydrates in your food. Mm -hmm. Um, without it you pretty much can't survive Um, with type 2 diabetes it tends to be brought on by lifestyle stress diet and it can be reversible Uh, type 1 isn't type 1 is um, completely lifelong until we find a cure type 2 sometimes it what it means is that your pancreas is producing a little bit of insulin and it just needs a little bit of help from an outside source either through uh, an uh, one injection or depending how many you need or even a pill and depending on your lifestyle sometimes you can change the way that you eat your lifestyle to, to reverse type 2 diabetes versus type 1 where it just kind of it doesn't matter really like it doesn't necessarily matter with the type of lifestyle you have when you get it you kind of are s- stuck with it um 
you can eat healthier and stuff obviously to manage it but it, it sugar doesn't correlate to uh your sugar int- intake doesn't correlate to getting type 1 diabetes oh, okay awesome. thank you for telling me the difference um so no worries. um you said um like sh- controlling your sugar would be um something that type 2 diabetes goes through or is it like both it, it's both so you have okay. to kind of manage your di- your numbers which is your sugar levels right. um right you would don't want them to be high you don't want them to be low the, you want them to be in range mm-hmm. um sugar intake so like the way that you eat and stuff a lot of people think that as a type 1 diabetics you got it because you ate a lot of sugar mm-hmm. which is not the case um type 2 sometimes does come from the way that you do eat like if you eat unhealthy all the time or you have a lot of stress in your life it can trigger type 2 diabetes especially if it is something that runs in your family Mm -hmm. type 1 is um genetics most of the time right um so it tends to like if it runs in your family like type 1 for example there's a chance someone in your family can get it Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just you're the only person, but mm-hmm. it's not brought on by things like what you eat um, and the lifestyle that you live. It's kind of already, you're kind of pre-born with it and it just over time develops. Yeah. Whoa. Is there um, other people in your family, if you don't mind me asking, that have it? Yeah. Too? So t- type one has, it runs in my family. So my grandfather had it um, and my uncle has type one. Type mm-hmm. two, there's a few people in my family too that have it. So one way or another someone in my family <laughs> was bound to get it so yeah um i do want to talk more about i guess we'll talk about now the misconceptions because i um you kind of mentioned it already with um the whole if you're eating a lot of chocolate or i guess some people will be like oh stop you're gonna get diabetes like um yeah could you could you um talk more about other misconceptions that people may have yeah so um Type 1 diabetes, it tends to be a lot, right? Like when you tell people, oh, like I'm a type 1 diabetic, they'll say stuff like, oh, you don't look like a type 1 diabetic, as if mm. they're supposed to be like a, uh, some, like an image of a type 1. Anyone can have it, right? Like yeah. it, with type 1, it, it, it's it's more, f- um, it's a, it develops uh, in younger children more frequently than it's when you're an adult. Oh, but okay. there are still cases of people who are adults who get it, right? Mm-hmm. Um there's a few people I know who got who developed type one in their early teens, um, whereas some are ch- they were children and they they uh, we got diagnosed with it. The other misconception too is, like I said, like the sugar thing. They're like, oh, why don't you just not eat sugar and it'll go away? And it's like, it's if it was that easy, yeah, I would we would have already done it, um, right? And the other thing too is I don't know if it's so much of a misconception, but a misconception. But I think a lot of people don't realize that having type one diabetes, it's a it's a constant full time job, right? Like your mind never shuts off about de- managing it. Mm-hmm. Like for example, like if if I was gonna go on a walk versus someone else, they're like you would have to be like, okay, I have my phone, we're good to go. But as a type one diabetic, you're like, okay, what's my blood? blood range at right now is it going to drop is it going to is it going to go high will i need to keep snacks with me uh should i pre bolus before should i should i uh should i take less insulin right so become like every almost every decision has to be premeditated you can't kind of be as spontaneous with certain things in your life when you're a type 1 diabetic because there's so much that goes into it that could affect it Mm -hmm. and the other one is if you're wearing an insulin pump this used to be my favorite is that people come up to you and be like, oh, like, are you listening to music? And it's always like, what? well, now because headphones are wireless, I get that. But I'm like, d- d- where? Like, <laughs> oh where's like, goodness. it's like, is that a pager? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, does anyone still carry a pager? Um, I think my favorite example is I used to have a tubeless um, insulin pump that I used to wear on my arm sometimes. And I was working retail at the time and I had someone come up to me and be like, do you know there's something on your arm? Oh and I thought legitimately there was something on my arm because I was just like looking for it. And I was like, wait, you mean the thing attached to me? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm aware that there's something on my arm. Oh like my someone didn't just come up to me and stick this thing on me and walk away. Like, so that tends to be like the misconceptions. And sometimes it's just like, what? <laughs> but yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. I can't believe yeah. um, it's just, it's, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe like 
just ignorance and they just don't yeah and I think it's just a lack of education around what type one is right it's seen like as a it is not it's obviously a negative thing to have in your life but it's not oh like it's not something that's not manageable right Mm -hmm. yeah and it may be uncommon to them like they've never seen um someone uh, correct my words uh, with an insulin pump is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So like, I like, usually for me, if someone asks me, I don't mind. Like I'm on, not every, not every diabetic is like that. There's a lot of mm-hmm. diabetics who are very, they just don't like to talk about that part of their life, which is fair. Not everyone does. Um, but I'm very open about it. So like, if someone was to ask me, oh, like, what is that thing on your arm? I'm, mm-hmm. I'll happily tell them. It's just sometimes I think people need to be more aware about how they were certain things when they yeah. go to someone, right? Oh, and gosh. have to be aware that they're not maybe not necessarily comfortable with talking about it, right? Exactly. I, I'm an open book when it comes to it, but not everyone is like that. Mm-hmm. And it's fair because it is a, something that is very, it can be emotionally and physically draining. So it's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so I just, um, <laughs> with the examples, with the pager, it's <laughs> what the heck? Because <laughs> who does carry that anymore um, it's just like just like casually just you know oh gosh and my p- pump used to be at one point pink so like yeah. it wasn't like it was like and I'm just like there's a tube coming out of it like what do you mean yeah. used to be? oh gosh <laughs> Yeah. So um, is it that the insulin pump is connected to you and that one gives you insulin because your pancreas isn't able to produce it for you, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a few types of different management systems when it comes to, to uh, um, giving yourself insulin. Mm-hmm. Some people take insulin shots. So that means like every um, few hours, every time you eat, you have to take a shot of insulin. Mm-hmm. Or you can be on the insulin pump, which I've been on now for almost close to fi- to. 12 or 13 years um and what it is is I always call it an extra like it's an external pancreas so what it does is that it's a depending on the type you have there's an omnipod which is the tubeless pump it kind of goes anywhere on your body and it doesn't have that tube or there's the one I'm on right now is the tandem there's also a Medtronic and those have they're not tubeless so they're attached to you through a little tube that sits under your skin um, and the tube is connected to the insulin pump. It, okay. It's you program it to give you insulin continuously throughout the day through a, um, a program called basal. And then okay. when you bolus, it's, it's that's when you're giving yourself units based on what you've eaten, or like if your blood sugar is high or s- something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and every for most of the insulin pumps, you change the site so where you have it on your body every three days. Oh, is what is the reason for that? Uh, usually insulin, so insulin is only, it's only good for a certain amount of time outside of the fridge and the technology that's in it. So for like the Omnipod, it only can last a certain amount of time. Um, and then the other ones, is just also giving your, your sites a break, right? Because then eventually what will happen if you use the same site, so it's there for long, insulin builds up underneath the skin and it, it doesn't administer the insulin properly into your bloodstream. Oh, okay. I see. And, um, Mm-hmm. Is this um, covered with OHIP or is it you have to cut? Yeah. Uh, um, oh, so gosh. every five years, if you're on if you're on the um, assistive device program with Ontario, I'm not sure what it's like in other that they'll cover the cost of the full insulin pump, mm-hmm. but the cost associated separately, majority of the time, it's not covered. They do ha- with the ADP program. Um, they cover. They send you a check every three months, but it barely covers the cost because mm-hmm. now with a lot of the insulin pumps, you're not just on the insulin pump. You're also on a thing called a uh, continuous glucose monitor. I'm on the Dexcom and that one monitors your blood sugar. So you don't have to prick your fingers all the time to test, to see where your blood sugar is. It does it automatically. Mm-hmm. And the insulin pump that I'm on right now communicates with my continuous glucose monitor. So when my blood sugar starts to drop, it tells the insulin pump, okay, her, her blood sugars are dropping. Yeah. Cut off the insulin until it starts to go back into range. Oh, so, wow. it, yeah, so it's, they're starting, the technology is getting so much better that it's starting to mimic a real pancreas in the sense that when it's dropping, it dro- stops insulin and they're working on when it goes high to give more insulin. Mm-hmm. The continuous glucose monitor, depending on your insurance, it, it can be covered up to a portion for a certain amount. Mm-hmm. Now, the government used to be a lot more helpful before there's a lot of changes um and it's it's super expensive like for me just for my insulin supplies that for about 45 days it's 240 dollars for just the 
pump site and the, the, the things I need to use in the pump, uh-huh. then the insulin vial needed w- without insurance is about $45. And that's lasts me about two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with my CGM, the sensor, which is last for 10 days is a hundred dollars per sensor. And then there's another piece that goes on it. It's the transmitter. And that's three, 289, I think around that. Oh and it's every three months. So overall, it, plus all the cost of like having to buy extra snacks and stuff like that, sure. being a diabetic comes with a hefty price tag. And that's just in Canada. Right. Um, and if you don't have insurance, you don't have ADP, like it's coming out of pocket and it's, it's ridiculous expensive. And, and if you get any money from the government, a lot of the time insurance companies won't help with the additional costs because they think that you're being covered by the government, but they don't take into account that it's like, okay, so if I'm getting, let's say example, $600 every three months, that covers maybe up like a quarter of what my actual costs are. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just a lot of back and forth with the insurance. Like for example, I was with an insurance company a while back that when I signed up for their insurance plan, I like triple checked that they were covering the continuous glucose monitor exactly. sensors. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yes, yes. I'm like, are you sure? Cause like, I'm not going to pay for an insurance plan if it's not going to cover it. Cause then it's going to end up costing me out of my pocket. They're like, no, exactly. for sure. It's covered. Like you don't have to worry about it. I ordered a bunch of supplies and I sent it to them and they declined it. And I was like, <sighs> and I called them and they're like, they're like, Oh, this isn't covered by your plan. I'm like, what? I was like, I guarantee that. And they're like, oh, well, our definition of what that piece is is different than what yours is. And I, and I like, <sighs> usually I'm, I'm pretty patient with people, but I'm like, you cannot do that. I was like, the terminology I'm using is a terminology that type one diabetics use. It's a terminology that nurses use. So when they, we call you to check, you need to know what that terminology is. And you can't have an internal different terminology than what's actually being used. Because when we're calling to check our plans, it doesn't match. So they, they, they honored it that one time, but they're like, yeah, but that's not how we, and I was like, that's great. I was like, then you need to consult with real people and with nurses and people who are actually in the industry when you set your policies, because then it's not fair. Cause had okay. I bought even more, I'd be out even more. Right. Yeah. And the problem right now, like in the States is a lot of people have to choose because their costs are so much higher than us. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people where there's been cases where it's like, they either have to choose between life or death. That's literally it. If we don't get our insulin, it's either life or death. There's no, there's no other option. If we don't get our insulin, we're going to die. And there's a lot of people in the U S who have been put in positions where it's like, okay, do they pay for their rent or their groceries or do they pay for their insulin to stay alive? Mm-hmm. And there's been a few cases where people have died because their insurance won't co- hasn't been quick enough to cover it, that they don't get the insur- their insulin in time. And they've just they've unfortunately passed away because of because of things like that so I think there's a lack of education amongst the government and insurance companies to realize that like this isn't a something that we're choosing to be on it's not something that we have control over so when we need it it's not because we're like oh I just feel like taking it to insulin today it's something that we need to be able to survive and I think I think there's just a whole lot of misconception and misunderstanding and they don't have the right people in the government when it comes to making policies about this stuff and they don't have the right information when it comes to all this stuff, which is why like charities like JDRF is a wonderful source for information and funding and research because they work closely with the um, government parties to make sure that there's representatives for, who are diabetics who have lived this life there and present to help them make these decisions and advocate for the people who, who, who are fighting pretty much to stay alive because of the costs that come with being diabetic. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Sarah. Mm-hmm. I feel oh. like I was completely unaware of that and like the costs associated with it. And yeah, that's, it's honestly so, that's so crazy. Yeah, like I was told my mom, I'm like, can you imagine how much money I would have if I wasn't a type 1 diabetic? <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like I have a whole section in my budget, like because I budget everything every month. For sure. That's yeah. just like my type my my diabetes supplies and it just it takes it eats away at a lot of a lot of your money. Mm-hmm. But it's not like you have a choice, right? Like it's it's and it's and I'm always I'm always very thankful and very blessed to be able to have these supplies. Not everyone has access to insurance or, and the support that I've had and it just sucks to think that like I wish there were there was more ways to be able to help people 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so your current insurance company now it does cover it like covers um some of your. Stuff? Luckily, I have about fifty percent coverage. Okay. So it's still uh, it's still not the best. It's it's yeah. it's good, but it's right. It's better than nothing, obviously. Sure. Um, right, and it's just at least that way I know I'm like if I buy. Two hundred dollars worth of supplies, and at least I get half of that back. And I'm like, okay, then I can buy more, and it just right. Mm-hmm. But some people don't even. It's just very recent that insurance companies have started acknowledging what CGMs are, which is the continuous glucose monitors, and mm. and start paying for them. And it does like. And the nice thing with I, I'm not sure how other Dex, how other CGM companies work, but I've worked with Dexcom. I've been using Dexcom for a while now, and mm-hmm. they're one of the companies that if you're like, okay, I have an insurance, I'm not sure if they cover it, they'll take that on and help you figure it out so that you're that, that they've had that communication with your the insurance company. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, that's so crazy! Thank you, Sarah. Uh, no worries. I, I know you kind of already uh, talked about like the challenges that you go through as a diabetic. I don't know. Are there like certain points that I don't know how to phrase it? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I know. I know what you mean. But yeah, yeah. there is. There's, so I'm one of those people who's who's also an insulin sensitive type one diabetic, which means that um, the slightest change in my routine or anything that is happening internally in my body will cause my numbers to go up and down. So I'm very routine with the things I eat and stuff like that. But a lot of the times, I don't have two days that are the same. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, um, so with being a type one diabetic too, it's just, it's a, it's a constant up and down with it. Some days your diabetes is great for it cooperates. The numbers are great. You don't really have to think about it. Other days, no matter what you do, you can't either bring it up or you can't even bring it down. Mm-hmm. And those days are draining because it's like on top of everything else that life has, you have going on in life, oh, you have yeah. to worry about your type one diabetes. Mm-hmm. And then, um, with the with the CGMs that you have to wear and that a lot of the times like if if you have sensitive skin or anything like that you tend to get reactions so because they're they're you have to wear them for a continuous amount of time right it, it mm-hmm. causes a reaction on the skin so right now I kind of look like a Dalmatian but it's red spots instead of black because I have like rashes from everything oh my god so yeah so it, it's it can be and it, sometimes it's just like it drains you emotionally I think that's my biggest challenge is sometimes like no matter how much work I put into and I've been diabetic for so long you would think that I would know what okay like this this food is going to affect my blood sugar like this every single time I eat the same food it'll affect it differently and not every diabetic is like that some people have like their diabetes is it's it's a lot easier to manage some have even a harder diabetes managed than mine mm-hmm. but I think a lot of the challenges is not only like the financial burden that comes with it and like things like getting reactions to the ter- type of adhesives that come on these patches that we have to wear but it's also like the emotional system of like constantly having to worry about type 1 diabetes and like if, it, if there's a, like a few there's sometimes I've had a week where my numbers will not do what they want to do and my nurses have tried to help me and that and it's just by the end of it I'm just like I can't I'm so like mentally and emotionally drained. And I think that's the, one of the biggest challenges that come with it is because it's like having another full-time job on top of everything else. And it's a thing that's constantly in the back of your mind. Right. So it's like, can't be spontaneous. Like even if you, let's say wanted to do like a day trip somewhere randomly, like you have, I have to make sure, okay, well, if I'm going away, like too far from home, I have to make sure I have extra supplies with me. Mm-hmm. And like, even when I, we did like, Frosh the one year like I had to make sure I had extra supplies so that like if anything happened like I was able to change it I wouldn't have to cut my day short to come home right so mm-hmm. it's I think that biggest challenge there is like it's an all it's something that's constantly there no matter how much you manage it it's there mm-hmm. like you have there's so much work and time and energy that you have to put into it to be able to to live as much of a normal life as you could Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's, um, that's a lot to go through. What would be some ways that kind of like help you with your everyday? Yeah. So for me, I'm lucky because I have a really great support system. Um, my nurses at the Trillium uh, Diabetes Management Center are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, they're always re- willing to help me out and, and having a great support system, I think it makes a huge difference because my mom up until I I was old enough to take care of everything for myself. She mm-hmm. was the one who who 
gave me my insulin, helped me count my carbs, made sure I was on top of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, And to this day, she'll still manage me like, oh, like your blood sugar is low. Did you take something? And I'm like, mom, I know. Like, (laughs) I'm 26. I I can figure out if I need to take a juice box or not. Um, And I think that helps a lot is like, that's what is helping me is my support system. And it helps me manage my everyday life. Like even my boyfriend is is very aware of everything that goes on. And, and then having the right type of management system for your diabetes in place makes it, even the bad days, at least a little bit more manageable because you know that at least you have something giving you insulin and mm-hmm. helping you manage it properly. Mm-hmm. Do people who have diabetes, do they um, usually always have access to nurses for them? Um, yes, because, mm-hmm. well, it's, yeah, because through OHIP, your, your, um, your visits with your, I can't remember the actual name for what your diabetes doctor and nurses are. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of an E, yeah, I can't remember the full name. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, the problem with that is like when we become an adult, sometimes a lot of people stop seeing their nurses and doctors as frequently, but it's just as important as when we're young to co- still go see our nurses and doctors because there are a lot of complications that do come with diabetes if it's not managed properly as you mm-hmm. get older mm-hmm. so like um everyone through OHIP will have access to to nurse as far as I know like have access to nurses and stuff like that um and it's just it's it's a two-way relationship right like you have to make sure you go to your appointments and all that stuff and your nurses are most nurses I've met and I've had have been phenomenal and really like right because they get to know you over the years and like mm-hmm. I've been going to before them I used to go to the pediatric unit at the Trillium Center and my nurses there were like a second family to me because I had been going there since I moved to Canada up until I was 18 and then I switched over to the adult center Mm -hmm. so like these nurses become very involved in your case too and they care about making sure that you're healthy as much as you do but again it's it's as it's they're only they can only help as much as you're willing to let them help you right so if you're not going to the doctor's appointments you're not following up um, then they can't really be available to you if you're not letting them be available, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, and like as you get older, complications like if you don't take care of it, like it's a weird thing. But our f- diabetics feet are very important. Um, you can you have to make sure like you never get any cuts on there or anything like that because if you can lose your limbs, um, you can go blind. You can your liver and kidney can shut down if you don't take care of your type one diabetes. Oh my god. So there's a lot of yeah, so there's a lot of complications as you get older that could happen if your numbers are not controlled. Mm-hmm. Which unfortunately is what my grandfather did, like he just didn't really care. Mm-hmm. Um for lack of better word about his diabetes and eventually his organs one by one start to shut down. Oh my god. So yeah. yeah, so it's 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 a full-time job that you have to make sure that you're managing because eventually it will take over and in, not in a good way. Mhm yeah it's not something that can be ignored right like if it's one of it's like someone think like, you know when a little kid sits there and pokes you and asks you a bunch of questions eventually they stop <laughs> diabetes is that little kid that will not stop um, and will only get more and more intrusive <laughs> mm-hmm. and I guess like as you get older um I mean of obviously there are a lot of complications health-wise that just come up when you get old so that yeah, definitely it, it, just ties into it. Yeah, that. and if you're not taking care of your diabetes, you're just adding a l- another layer of risk for other things. But if you right. are managing it, those risks just become very low, mm-hmm. um, right? So if you manage your diabetes, you can live as much of a normal life as, as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's all about making sure that you have a, like as much of a support system. I know not everyone has access to that the same support system and all in the same type of supplies and to same type of financial assistance but again it's just, it, I, I wish everyone did because that makes a huge difference mm-hmm, for sure my my next question is kind of um if you could share with us what your everyday routine kind of looks like and what your um like what type of foods you do eat on a regular basis yeah for sure so um for me uh a regular day for so like a weekday is um wake up get ready all that stuff um because you have to disconnect if you're wearing one of the top pumps with the tube you have to disconnect your pump I tend to put um a unit of insulin so that during the time I'm showering and getting ready by the time I reconnect my insulin pump my blood sugar doesn't go up because there isn't insulin being delivered Mm -hmm. um have breakfast um usually I have the same thing it's like pita with cheese 
super easy. And it's um, over the last month or so, I've been testing out different foods to see what foods in the morning cause my blood sugar to go up really high and keep it high all day and which ones kind of help me keep it controlled. So I've landed on pitas with cheese every morning. <laughs> it helps, <laughs> helps to keep my numbers nice. Um, I'll put insulin for that and then just kind of go about my day up and, and my insulin, my and nice thing with my insulin pump is throughout the day, it's giving me its own insulin on its own. Mm-hmm. I'll have lunch and I'll bolus for that. So I'll take more insulin. And then if I have any snacks throughout the day, again, I'll give myself more insulin. Same with dinner time. And then um, right now I'm having a little bit of an issue with my numbers being a little higher overnight. So it's just, which would mean that I have to wake up and give myself insulin throughout throughout the night. Um, I'm trying to work on getting it back to normal. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. Um, the foods I've learned to stay away from is anything really sugar, like super sugar. So like if I have pancakes, for example, with syrup, mm-hmm. that just destroys my numbers all day. So I've learned to stay away from things like that. Um, anything with light carbs too tends to help. Um, for me, it, it just it kind of like a hit and miss. Sometimes I've been learning over the years what foods tend to cause my numbers to go up mm-hmm. and which ones don't. And just kind of learning a learning curve with that. And then, yeah, so there's the healthier you eat, obviously, the better your numbers are. So I've been trying to implement a little bit more healthy, but that's very hard when it's the holidays. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And, yeah. and this um, definitely varies from each diabetic. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. Some people yeah. like stick, they have, it, it depends on like your lifestyle and stuff. It depends on the type of food you eat. Yeah. Um, some, and with type one diabetes, there's, there's a higher risk that you become celiac. So there's a lot of people who are celiac. Gluten, who have yeah. To cut, yeah. They have to cut out gluten and stuff like that. Uh, knock on wood so far I'm not one of those so because I do love my my very (laughs) gluten foods so um but yeah that tends to be dates usually whenever I'm eating I'm making sure that I'm pre-bolusing so putting insulin before because that makes a huge difference because it takes a little bit for the insulin to actually kick in and you want the insulin to kick in at the same time that your food is starting to digest in your body Mm-hmm. Um, which I've learned over the years like I have it, it takes a bit of routine change because when you get I've gotten the habit of ch- giving myself insulin after I eat but now as 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 time has gone on it's it's working better for me if I put the insulin before and it's just kind of changing my routine and my habits around that mm-hmm. my gosh that must be um because you were sh- you were sharing that uh it's been harder to track at nighttime so you have to wake up in the middle of yeah. the night to kind of yeah so anytime um, anytime that my blood sugar goes up or down my um insulin pump and my cgm tend to go they go off so oh, they give okay. you uh they give you an alarm that hey your blood sugar is high hey your blood sugar is low oh, and with okay. the dexcom it's attached to an app on my phone and on my mom's phone so she gets the notifications too gotcha yeah so which is really nice because like if i'm ever away on a trip or anything like that she she can have peace of mind knowing that she can still track my numbers without having to call me to make sure that they're good mm-hmm. um so like i don't being a type 1 diabetic means it's also you don't really get full night sleep you're always like if your blood sugar goes low you have to get up and like actually treat it with something so take a juice box take a milk a chocolate milk whatever it is that you you have to take mm-hmm. if it's high it means waking up and having to put more insulin mm-hmm. but it, it disrupts your sleep right because when your drop blood sugar drops your body goes into a panic right so it like for me i overheat when i'm it starts to drop mm-hmm. so it'll wake me up like that and then plus the noise that comes with all the alarms so oh yeah for sure yeah so the nights that I have really bad nights, my entire family is like, we, none of us slept last night from the alarms. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go through, the, through this with me. <laughs> like if I'm not sleeping, no one is. Yeah. <laughs> We're in this together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, um, is it difficult to eat out at restaurants then being diabetic or? Um, yes and no. Like depends on the type of food. Most places are really great because like you can find their intru- nutritional information online. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just being aware of the carbs, right? And knowing like fatty foods tend to digest different than non-fatty foods and knowing how your body reacts. Um, each diabetic again is different. So like for me, some foods I have to, 
split up my insulin so that it gives me some up front right when I'm eating and then it like extends through a first two hours and gives me the rest of the insulin among like throughout the two hours mm -hmm. because of the way that food digests so it can be hard in the sense that like you just have to kind of know the type of food that you're eating and be able to have access to the carbs that they that that is in the food so that you mm -hmm. can put the right type of insulin for it gotcha and is there um different types of like vitamins that kind of help with digestion that you would take um it's like maybe probiotics or something like that um, yes kind of for me like I, I'm also I have a very sensitive stomach so for mm -hmm. me like um probiotics and stuff like that are very important just having an, a healthy yeah. digestive system also helps right because like okay. when you're like when your stomach is upset depending on your diabetes too it can trigger your numbers to to go up and down and it ends up causing more stress on the body mm -hmm. so di your diabetes links to everything right so like even like if you're like a diabetic gets sick our numbers tend to play go up and down if we're I, like even when I have a headache sometimes my numbers will shoot up oh my gosh. Uh, right so like every little thing in your body is connected with your diabetes and that's mm -hmm. why it's so important to like be on top of it and really understand what your happens in your body with it mm -hmm. wow thank you Sarah um mm. I have one last question um could you share any tips that um, other people who are going through diabetes um, or are like maybe starting uh, like ha sorry have been currently diagnosed with it I guess um, yeah yeah so my big my tips are get to know your nurses they're gonna be the people that help you the most when it comes to managing your diabetes um, they're they're there to be your support system and they're there to really help you um, reach out to people in the diabetes community. I know when you're first diagnosed, you're just like, it's almost like, what am I going to do? Like, do I get to live a normal life? And it, it, all of these things become so overwhelming and it can be really hard when you're first diagnosed with it, especially if, when you're younger, you might not exactly understand what it means, but if you're diagnosed a little bit older, like mm -hmm. all these questions go through your mind. Right. And it, it's okay to feel like that. Like, honestly, it's okay to have bad days. It's okay to, want to take your pump and throw it against a wall and like mm -hmm. not actually do it because I would break it but like it's okay <laughs> to have those feelings of exhaustion and and let yourself feel those things because honestly you're even even the slightest thing that you can do you're doing your best and that's all that counts mm -hmm. and the nice thing with type 1 diabetics is we have a really strong community um there are so many different ways to get and connect contact with different type one diabetics and majority of us are the ones I've at least I've I've been lucky enough to know they've they're great they're you, you lean on each other when you need support when you there's not necessarily answers that you can find online um and the nice thing is but as time has been going on by more and more diabetics have started their own businesses there's um so I'm one of those people luckily um Ooh. there are different there are different even like purses so my Abetic is one really great company that um i've shopped from before they've created purses and wallets for type 1 diabetics that have specific pouches and insulated spots and all that stuff for your diabetic needs wow. there are so many wonderful small companies too that create like fun accessories about your for your diabetic supplies and stickers and things like that to make make it a little bit more fun to have to deal with this thing mm. but but having your support system, whether it's through your nurses or your family, your friends, um, just know you're not going through that alone and that struggle and the, the exhaustion and everything that comes with being a type 1 diabetic, you're feeling it and it's, they're valid. Your feelings are valid and guaranteed you at least one other person in the, is a type 1 diabetic has gone through it and understands it. And it's reaching out to them, whether you're newly diagnosed or you've been diagnosed for 20, 30 years, that community is really strong. Mm -hmm. um and even reaching out to, to a charity like jdrf they have so many resources that can help you and the people who work there are honestly the most genuine people i've ever met they are even though not all of like they might not have type 1 diabetes they are so compassionate and pathetic and they their whole career and their whole mission is to help turn type 1 diabetes into uh, to nothing one day and have a cure for it and they do so many wonderful events and they'll connect you with type 1 diabetics they have a mentorship program 
Um, so it's just really just understanding that you're not alone in it. And I know at times, like when your numbers are high and they're not coming down, it feels like you're alone in it. You're mm-hmm. really, you're not. Um, but yeah. And on that note, I want to bring up, so my uh, yeah. business partner, Lenny, um, have started a company called uh, Diawear. Um, with wearing an insulin pump, I love wearing dresses, but you can't actually get to your insulin pump when you're wearing a dress unless you awkwardly reach under your dress to get it or you go to the bathroom and you have to like bring it through your dress or that awkward moment where like it's clipped on and all of a sudden it drops in between your legs when you're standing and talking to someone you kind of have to pull it up without without breaking eye contact and making sure that you're like I know what I'm doing just ignore it so (laughs) so so with that struggle throughout the pandemic I kind of like was like hey you know what like I I looked online tried to find these dresses that would have a way for me to be able to access my pump from the outside but there was nothing I could find so we started our own company called Diaware um you can find us on Instagram at we are Diaware d-i-a-w-e-a-r and um, what it is, is we have five designs right now that each come in four colors. Um, they're cute everyday dresses. They're handmade in Canadian and they're superly nice designed. Um, there is a pocket and it's got a little slit that lets you feed your tube through and connect it over your dress. And it's the insulin pump since it's in a pocket that you have access to without actually having to go under your dress. It makes it super easy to actually still manage your diabetes, but look really cute when you do it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, my gosh. Not uh, a problem. Could you also um, share if, say, for example, someone wants to learn more about diabetes and if it's okay if they reach out to you yeah so they can check out our site we are uh diaware on instagram mm-hmm. and they can message me right on there and let me know like hey i can talk to them however they need and they can even buy our dresses on there if they'd like but awesome. reach out to me through our instagram if you have any questions and i'm more than happy to help or talk or anything that anyone needs mm-hmm. yay thank you so much sarah this episode was Oh, it was so good. I, I think, thank you so much for just like sharing and educating us about diabetes. I feel like it's so important and I, and I think people just don't realize it or understand what other people are going through, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it really like gave me, um, gave me insight on how much more I need to, like, I'm unaware of, um, yeah. and that you, you, people who have, um, diabetes are just warriors like it's it's crazy um thank you so much not a problem and thank you for having me it was really great to talk about it Mm -hmm. again like I'm an open book when it comes to my diabetes and especially now with this company that I've started like the diaware it gives me a nice way to at least combat a very very small problem that we face as di- anyone who identifies as a woman um diabetic Mm -hmm. faces when we want to look cute like it becomes frustrating but this way you can at least look cute and still manage your diabetes no matter the numbers that you get exactly yeah awesome thank you so much sarah um thank you to everyone listening bye thank you so much bye bye